I think the most fun text we've had is when Gronk signed. Tom texted me and said, football's fun again. The cool thing about dealing with these guys, they are just like you and me. They're big kids. They, they might be, you know, superstars, goats, the best ever, but they're big 12 year olds. I'm Tom House. I'm a performance analyst that works with 3QB, the National Pitching Association, and Muster. I deal with rotational athletes. The athletes we work with will be everything from the elite end, major league pitchers, elite quarterbacks, all the way down to the everyday kid in Little League and their families, with the idea that we're trying to get them to perform and be healthy for whatever their sport is as long as they play. In this current climate, probably the only one-on-one -on -one instruction that I'm conducting right now is with Drew Brees, and it's because we're neighbors out here in Del Mar. But I am still with someone like a Brady. We do talk, we do Skype, we do Zoom. He sends me video. We're doing exactly the same thing. It's just with technology. At the end of a season, all these players go through what we call an active rest and recovery stage. When the season was over, all of them take a break. And just about the time they would normally be ready to start working again is when the pandemic hit. The net result is what you and I are doing right now. The football and the baseball athletes doing exactly the same thing. They're being homeschooled. There's different types of training. There's block training, there's random training, and there's deep training. And deep training is when you're actually working by yourself. It goes back to the good old days when a little kid was throwing a tennis ball against the garage door. We give these elite athletes things they can do by themselves, and they learn more doing that because there's no judgment on outcome. And if they have the right specificity, if they're doing things that are unique to their particular interpretation of a movement, they will learn more in deep training than they will in a group setting or where someone is actually evaluated. Moving to Florida has been an experience. I don't think he's got a gym that he goes to, but he's got facilities in the house he's living in. I think it's common knowledge he's living in Derek Jeter's house. My guess is that Derek Jeter had a gym that's probably better than anything I've ever gone to. We probably communicate at least once a week around what he's doing. Tom has his guy, Alex Guerrero. Everything physical is with Alex. Everything nutritional is with Alex. So Tom doesn't need that from me. All he needs is an evaluation of his throwing motion. When he sends a video, I pretend like I've never seen him before. He'll either text me or leave me a voicemail and say, look, I just filmed about 20 throws. Have a look, give me a shot if you see anything, or let's talk this afternoon or tomorrow, and we'll do it. We look at initially his timing, then his kinematic sequencing, and then the throwing variables that most coaches would teach. Balance and posture, stride and momentum, opposite and equal, and then the throwing variables that are quantified and specific to him. And he'll have his capture in front of him. I say, okay, on your third throw to the left, have a look at that. Your front side flew open a little bit. That'll just be my eyes talking. And I'll give him some of the cues that we use in our vocabulary for his teach. So it's just like being there, except we're, we're both looking at video at the same time. Because of the long-term relationship, we have a vocabulary that works for him. It's different than the vocabulary that I teach with a Drew Brees or whoever. But around that, there are things that he consistently has to pay attention to because when he originally wired his mechanics way back when, it wasn't as efficient as what he's got right now. There's windows of trainability. The first window is your nervous system. It's neurological. And the age that goes with that are eight to about 13 year old, male or female. The second window is the strength window where it's muscle that you're working on. And that's 13 to about 18 or 19. Then the third window of trainability is skill acquisition. When nerves and muscle can talk to each other, and that's 18, 19 years old till 32 or 33 years old. And then the fourth window is skill retention going into their 40s. Skill retention is trying to hang on to everything that they've got to make them as good as they are.
Tom is always having to pattern and repattern with the aging process. He has to work on things neurologically, just like a 10 or 11 year old might have to work on. So I never disclose what an individual athlete is working on with us specifically, but in general terms, it's what he needs to do to be the best Tom Brady he can be. I think the most fun text we've had is when Gronk signed, he texted me and said, football's fun again. The cool thing about dealing with these guys, they are just like you and me. They're big kids. They, they might be, you know, superstars, goats, the best ever, but they're big 12-year-olds. Gronk is the ultimate 12-year-old, 32-year-old superstar. Gronk is one of those guys in the locker room or on the field that just has a great time playing. And it's what we call the power of play. It's always more fun to work at something you're having a good time at than it is to work at work. You don't tell a kid to go out and work at baseball. You go and tell him to play at baseball. So Gronk is the ultimate play guy. What Tom and Drew and all these elite guys do, they bring their receivers with them because quarterback receiver is like pitcher and catcher. You have to be like one mind to make it work. He hasn't started throwing to receivers yet. He's just physically preparing with Alex for when he will be throwing to receivers. And then we'll adjust, we'll look at calendar and make do with video until such time as either I can get to him. He comes out to California on a regular basis. And a lot of times we'll meet at a neutral field with his receivers. And then it'll be like business as usual. But I think everything's supposed to start big time in September. So I'll, I'll probably see him early August out here in California or back in Tampa. Drew, because I'm actually able to be with him, we're, you know, approaching things a little bit different with his cross-specific training. We're going twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and they'll go anywhere from an hour and a half to three hours, depending on how he feels. But that's our usual off-season work anyway. We're just doing it at his house now, instead of out on a football field. What we're doing is preparing him to throw a football farther at his current age than he's ever done before. If Drew can continue to stretch the field as a 41, 42 year old, just like he did when he was 21 or 22, and then you add in all the experience and all the things that he already knows, he'll be a 42 year old, 22 year old. It's really hard to defend. That's what our goal is for the offseason. I don't know if you're aware, but Drew is a world-class tennis player in high school. And I think one of the reasons he's such a good quarterback is his footwork is just pristine. So one of the things that he's enjoying, we put a tennis racket in his hand. Serving a tennis ball is virtually the same activity as throwing a football. So he's getting work as a tennis player for his footwork and getting work with his shoulder with a tennis racket in it. And it's fun, it's something different. And because it is a rotational sport, it translates into throwing a football. So he's having fun with that. What I'm really amazed is that a couple of his boys play lacrosse, so he took it up and he can actually do lacrosse right now like he's been playing it his whole life. Drew's a great, well, all these guys are great athletes, but it's a fun thing to do that is cross specific to throwing football. So a lot of our training, has not been about throwing the football, it's about working with other implements from other sports that are specific to what you do when you throw football. We don't think specialization for a young athlete is good. We recommend to play all sports as long as you possibly can. But what we're doing with Drew, who's in his fourth window of trainability, which is skill retention, we're taking him back to his first window where we'd have a 12-year-old playing as many sports as he possibly could. And what happens with a the neuroplasticity, they pull stuff up the shelf in their brain and will re-pattern the nervous system to be 14, 15 years old again. So we're having fun learning about this stuff. And I think the athletes are having fun with the work they're doing too. So we've been experimenting with tennis stuff and lacrosse stuff. You know, he's got a big pool and paddling around like a surfer in the pool and then training with weighted balls. He hasn't touched a football yet. We learned that with Andrew Luck when we were bringing his shoulder back, that you don't have to have a football to train to throw a football. Throwing a one pound ball is just like throwing a football 
You use the weighted balls to build the functional strength in the accelerators and decelerators to handle throwing a football 60 yards. Our testing has revealed that if you can throw a one pound ball X miles an hour, because one mile an hour is one yard of the football, and Drew has been throwing a one pound ball 61 miles an hour, which means when we put a football in his hand, he'll be able to throw a football 55 to 61 yards. Can I stand up and get something real quick? Okay, I'm back. So this is how we're gonna start actually throwing because he doesn't have a receiver. See, it's a football with a blunt nose. So he'll be throwing the blunt nose football into the bounce back. And that's how he's gonna start his throwing process. You throw into it, it bounces back to you and he catches. It's probably 10 yards to 20 yards to start with. Volume equals load, frequency, intensity, and duration. We might start off with 30 to 45 throws at 30 feet on the first day besides all the other throwing activities that we were doing with training. And that would be the beginning of his skill work. This time of the year, he's ratcheting up his volume of work. He wants to prepare his total body for more than the season will ever take out of it. What we figured out with Drew is he will work really, really hard, except on Wednesday. Wednesday is his active rest day. The hardest thing with Drew is convincing him that sometimes less can be more. All these elite guys are insanely committed to getting better every day. And a lot of them at times will overwork. Recovery, just as important as preparation and competition. So it goes prepare, compete, recover, repeat. There's your cycle. And this goes with day-to-day -day preparation in the off season and day-to-day -day preparation in season. I'm in the process of retiring at, at age 73. As much as I enjoy being out there on the road or whatever, it's kind of time for me to slow down a little bit. And you know, the pandemic thing we're going through, what it's done is it's sped up everything that I had going in motion. The new app that we put together is called Mustard. All our engineers have taken all the capture that we've done over 30 years. Nolan Ryan's in it, and Randy Johnson, all these elite athletes. I think we have almost 900 major league pitchers, about 110 NFL quarterbacks, got a thousand big league hitters. All this stuff is in the database and literally using that data, we're coming up with models that can be delivered and captured on a cell phone. Everything that I'm doing with Brady, Breeze, or whoever it might be, the everyday parent and the everyday athlete can access the same thing. So we're humanizing artificial intelligence, we're reinforcing the power of play, and we're making sure that if an athlete follows protocols, that he can perform with health and get better at what he or she is doing. I've actually gone through this in my mind. I think we've learned how to deliver. If there's 120 million families out there that have athletes, youth people in their homes, I think we've figured out a way to access that 120 million families. What we might lack in interpersonal connection, we're making up for with the expediency of the internet. So overall, uh, we're doing the same thing. We're just doing it using technology now instead of face-to-face. -face.